Okay, good morning, men. My name is Rich Erdely. I was the offensive coordinator at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh for 29 years out of my 45 years coaching. It's my pleasure to talk about my offense, the hybrid wing T. And today, the first thing we're going to talk about is the introduction and philosophy. And uh, we're going to get going here. I believe this is a, the most adaptable offense you can run because you, you can adapt it to your personnel. I've done it with all kinds of kids. I've done it with five foot eight quarterbacks and obviously six foot four quarterbacks when I had Dan Marino. So we had you know, great throwers. We've had great runners at that position. I've had 145 pound guards in high school and 170 pound tackles. We, we, it's an angle blocking philosophy and I think it's adaptable to so many situations. We're trying to create conflicts for the defense, either by personnel, by motions, and I'm gonna talk about all of these things. We're trying to create conflicts for individual players. We wanna put one person in particular in conflict in each situation. It could be an outside backer, it could be a defensive end, a nine technique, it could be a, a defensive tackle, a three technique, so we're gonna put these players in conflict and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna to try to do that. And I believe it all starts with a flank attack. You know, and I, I look at, at, play, at, at plays and if you wanna run the trap, if you get a three foot hole or two foot hole, boy, you're happy. If you wanna run the belly play or an off tackle play, you get a three foot hole, you're lucky. And I'm looking at the outside, I'm looking at the flank from the tight end to the boundary you might have 15 or 20 yards. That's the biggest hole on the field. So it's my theory, it's my philosophy that we're gonna attack the flank first and everything comes off of that. People think it starts inside. No, it starts at the flank. So it is a flank attack. I believe we're the original spread offense. All four backs carry the ball. All four backs are involved almost every play. Quite often, we're able to put the quarterback in pass run situations, either by RPOs or bootlegs, so that he is in a run or pass situation throwing the ball, or the RPO based on a flank attack to one side, a pass to the other side, depending on, on defensive coverages. You must carry out your fakes and block, and that's everybody. Number one thing when we have backs, they have to be willing to block for each other. And I think one of the things you're going to see that our, our kids are willing to do that. And that's where it all starts. And everybody must carry out their fakes, quarterbacks, backs, and it's so important. We start with a few basic plays. And each play, the concept here is that each play has plays off of it. But we only need a few basic plays. And we run them from multiple formations. And that's sort of the, the, the idea. Now I've taken just one series here, the jet sweep. And I've been f playing with the jet sweep since 1997. I was doing a glazier clinic years ago in Cincinnati. And at the end of the clinic, a fella calls me and says, coach, I got a play I want to send you. So I said, he sent me this tape of this play jet sweep. And I said, wow, we can do so many things off of this. So just from this one play, you have the basic run the jet, which is the external play. We have a counter off of it, which is jet crisscross. We have a pass off of it, which was a one-step pass. A pass off the counter, which is jet crisscross pass, and an internal play, jet trap. Now, if you have the external play, the internal play is nice to have. Is it necessary all the time? Not really, but most of the time we do have that thread of that. So I've looked at, at several plays here, and I just want to show these to you, and I'm going to talk about all of these in great extent when I talk about the jet series. But this is what I'm talking about. Now here we have the jet sweep to the tight end flank. We have it, we have it here. And look at the fullback coming through and almost gets the key block downfield. Everybody is trying to block. Everybody's carrying out their fakes. Now the internal play off of that is jet trap. So here again, you're going to see my wing back here. 
almost make the block. He's right down there. He gets the block right there to spring the fullback for an extra 15 yards. So the jet back is making a fake. So that's our internal play. The counter play off of it, my favorite counter, is the crisscross. So this is half back to half back handoff. Fullback makes a nice block. And again, I'll talk about these at greater, greater length. But I'm just giving you the, the concept of the series of plays. And this is why we don't get much man coverage. Here the defense was playing man to man. And it's difficult for them to, to cover everybody. And again, I'll talk about this play at great length. We can run a pass off of the counter. So the counter is the crisscross. Now we're going to run a pass. Half back to half back, pitch it back to the quarterback, and he hits the split end. Half back to half back. And guys, run this during homecoming every year. The alumni will love it. And finally, we, we started putting this in a one-step game. We saw the pros, particularly Tom Brady, very good at running a one-step game. You see here we have the corner off. And again, I'm going to talk about this at greater length when we talk about each individual play. But just to give you the concept of here we have five plays off of jet sweep. Now, what we're trying to do is to use multiple formations, motions, shifts, or combos. I call it create the element of doubt. And you see, I have here, screw the coach. Because you've coached that kid up all week, and you say, son, when that tackle pulls, you do this. Well, what we're doing, the tackle is going to pull, and now it doesn't matter because he's seeing the backs moving in the backfield. He saw a shift. We played a wing T team one time and we shifted. They changed the format, they changed their defensive call. We went in motion, they made another defensive call. They had three defensive calls on one play. I got to think that out of 11 guys, one person is not going to make the correct reaction. I call it eye candy. So you're putting people in motion, you're shifting, and this is on every play, every play unless we're running on first sound, and that's particular to particularly short yardage offense. Now, this is who we were at Carnegie Mellon. We always had the threat of jet sweep, buck sweep, and belly slide from every formation. So as soon as we came out, the defense had to consider these three, these three series because we always had the threat. And that's who we were. If you ask, we were a buck sweep, jet sweep, belly slide team, with a quick passing game and a play action attack off of each play. So that's what, that was our concept. That's who we were. And I urge you to develop a concept. Decide who you want to be. Now, you can't be all things, okay? You have to make decisions because why? You only have so much practice time. So whatever, whatever your thoughts are, and whenever you want to add something, you always have to think, how expensive is this? What is the cost to add this play? For us to add jet sweep, it's almost no cost. Certain plays, certain, it's, it's a lot, it's a big cost. I'm going to talk about buck sweep to a great extent, mainly because it's one of my favorite plays. Now, there's a lot of coaching in buck sweep. It's an expensive play. To me, it's worth it. To many young coaches today, it's not. I urge you to consider that. But you have to make those decisions based on your time, based on your personnel, of what you want to be. That's who we were. Buck sweep, jet sweep, belly slide. We had them in every formation. Now, when we got in shotgun and spread formations, 
nothing changed for us. The rules, assignments, landmarks, or mesh points, everything was basically the same. And I believe in that because what does it do? Similarity breeds consistency. You do it over and over and over again, and the landmarks are all the same. So it doesn't matter what formation you're in. It's just a play. It's just a formation, and the play is inherent in that formation. The motions are inherent. Now, again, this is my philosophy. There are three keys to offensive football. Number one is knowledge of assignment. And if you, if you don't know what to do, you can't play. That's as simple as it is. And oftentimes, we may be played a little bit lesser player because he never made a mistake. He knew what to do. So you must know your formation, your rules, your alignment, and your cadence. On every play, you can't screw this up. If you screw this up, we have a problem. The play will fail. All 11 people must be on the same page. So knowledge of assignment is paramount. The second is your first two steps. And this is so important, and I see today in the game that people really aren't coaching this up, I don't think, as, as well as you should coach it up. Because what does it do? Your first two steps put you in the proper angle to carry out your assignments. Put your body in the proper position, gives you leverage and technique. You need this on your first two steps. And if you, if you don't, if you're supposed to step, if I'm the, the, the halfback and I step with my inside foot, which I'm supposed to do, I'm going to be on the correct path to make, a, make my block. If I step with this foot, uh, I can't do it. I've not done my proper step. I'm going to miss my block. So your first two steps get you in a body position, gives you a chance for leverage. And that's what this offense is about. It's about creating leverage, creating movement, creating angles for, for your people to block. The third thing, go fast, go hard, play tough. It doesn't take much ability to give effort. If you can't give me effort every time, you can't play. You know, and I don't care how good you are. You can't take a playoff. You can't, you got to fake, you got to block. And there have been many times when we're grading plays, I'll give the quarterback a plus because he threw a touchdown pass, and I gave him a minus because he made a poor fake. Now, maybe we got lucky make, making the touchdown pass, but it was not consistent. It was not what we expected out of him. So you have to do your assignment on every play. Knowledge of assignment, first two steps, go fast, go hard, and play tough. Give it, give it your all every play. Now we got a chance. I took one play here, the buck sweep. And I'm going to go back and forth to, the, to these two slides. We're, we're in a particular offensive set here. Rip, and I'm going to talk about this extensively. Rip, 628 buck sweep. I'll explain this all to you in another session. But basically what we're trying to do here, we've moved tackles over. We are in an unbalanced set. We have tackles to the right. So the, the tackles are to the right. This is your, still your right tackle. Your left tackle has come over to be the outside tackle. He, in essence, is taking the place of what would be the tight end. But what I have done here is I've created a four-man surface with my three biggest players. And this was particularly good for me in high school because why? Well, maybe I didn't have a lot of big guys. So even so at Carnegie Mellon. So we were trying to create doubt in the defense, trying to create angles, trying to create, give ourselves the best chance at success. So the tight end is backside, and there's only one formation that we ever had that we covered up an eligible receiver, and that was we called ends. We had two ends flanked wide, both on the line of scrimmage, on the same side of the formation. Now, that we did that to, to try to create something illusionally for the defense. But in every other formation, I never wanted to give up my eligibles. I always wanted the defense to have to account for an eligible. We ran buck sweep particularly from this formation because if the split end was still to this flank, usually that corner was so tight on my wing 
and he came so hard, it became so difficult for us to block him. By putting the spread end out there, now you back the corner off and you make the strong safety responsible for support. And that's normally what he does not want to do or was not been coached to do. So we retain all our eligibles, but I, I, I drew this play up because I wanted in particular to look at first steps. Okay, so let's look at the right halfbacks assignment. Block down first free man inside, aim for the inside foot of the tight end. Well, the tight end is over here, but the, uh, he's taking the place of the tight end. So if I, if I am that right halfback and all my backs are in the upright position, all are in a two-point stance, including the fullback. When I am on the wing, I have a slightly staggered stance, but my first step is inside, aiming for the inside foot of the tight end with my left foot. I stay on that angle. Now, I'm reading this this man here, the nine technique, the man over the ghost tight end or the, this out, the outside tackle, because why? Well, if I step down and he slants out into me, now I have to alter my course and take him on with an inside shoulder block rather than an outside shoulder block. But my first step got me in the proper position to do that. Instead of do, going here, if I stepped here and he slanted hard, I have no chance to get to him. If he plays out into me, well, I do have a chance. But if he goes hard to the inside, I have no chance. So my first step is critical. So too with the two tackles. Their rule is what? Gap down backer. Their rule is gap down backer, gap down backer. Block the man in my gap. And again, their first step, three-point stance, their first step is about 75 degrees flat to block the man in the gap or the next man down. So here, in this situation, the guard has a man over him, the inside tackle has a man over him, so the two tackles, they block the three technique and the five technique. That's their first two steps. My right guard, he's got to pull with some depth because if he pulled flat, he would run into the down blocks of those people. He's, his first step is with depth at one th what I call 135. So he's not pulling flat at 90, he's got to get deeper at 135. His next step is cross over with depth and then flattens out. So he takes his three steps, two steps of depth, flattens out and attacks the flank. He must get around that down block. The center reach area away and the backside guard is going to pull flat and he's, his assignment is to wall off. First steps, the dive back, first step is cross over at 90. So he wants to cross over at 90. His first step, crossing over at 90 to take the handoff from the quarterback. Fullback is going to run the trap right course. His first step is right foot for the left foot of the center. Fullback, dive for the left foot of the center run trap right course and block area. So he's got to try to find someone to block. If there's right there, fine. If not, just keep going. Run into somebody. Make a good fake and maybe they'll think you're good and they'll tackle you. So these are, these are our thoughts. Quarterback reverse pivots on the midline. So again, here is my midline. Quarterback is going to reverse pivot Put his left foot on the midline as he turns, boom, getting his back to the line of scrimmage. The fullback passes, the quarterback has the midline, the fullback is off the midline. When I talk about running trap in our jet series, the fullback has the trap on midline, but here he does not. Again, first two steps. These are the thoughts that I'm trying to impart. So. First two steps are critical. We see that the, the uh, spread end is going to fake his crack and go up, go block the safety. We have everyone blocked except the corner. The back has to be his own blocker at some time. But I, I put this up again. I'm going to talk about this in great, great uh, depth. I just want to point out one point here, this outside tackle, this fella right here. 
okay? His rule is gap down backer. He has a seven technique on him here in the 4-4 defense. He's got an inside shade. And I'm going to talk about how we call all of these in my next segment here. The segment on, on uh, uh, developing the system. So he has an inside shade. That man is in his gap for a reason. He's a gap player. So we tell him to block him. Many people try to get him inside of him. We never had success doing that. Then the, the wing didn't know who to block, and we ended up not blocking anybody. Or we had two men on one, which is a waste of time. So I tell him if he's on your inside shade, he's in your gap, block him. These are the, all the, the schemes that you could possibly have. 3-3, three, 3-4, three, three, four, four, four. And again, I'm going to talk about this in great depth. I'd like to just show you the play. I'm going to run through the play here one time. And just to give you the idea of what we're trying to accomplish here with Buck Sweep. And you'll notice all their first steps are excellent. We have the flank sealed. And you're going to watch our guards here kick out. We have a guard leading through. And you're going to watch 77, 69, 55. Look at all those kids still running downfield. Never give up on a play. You don't know what's going to happen. The, tackle, the ball carry gets tackled. We have a fumble. You're there to recover. Never give up on a play. Hustle, hustle, hustle. Give 100% on every play. Nobody's laying down. Look at all our kids are up and running down there. Nobody is laying down. But it's, it's, uh, it's effort. You cannot, if I have to coach effort, you can't play. If I have to coach effort, you can't play. So give us effort. You need no athletic ability to do that. I appreciate your attention here, and I hope you've underst you understood the, the philosophy of my offense, the four-back philosophy. Everyone is blocking for each other. Everyone is faking for each other. I call it the original spread offense because everybody runs the ball, and I think it's the most multiple attack you can have. Thank you very much.